Hello! In this video we will discuss continuity of functions of a single variable. A function is said to be continuous if its graph is a continuous curve with no holes or jumps and which can be sketched without lifting the pencil off the paper. Have a look at the following graph. Here we see a jump when x equals 3 and therefore this function is discontinuous at that point. Here, there is a hole when x equals negative 2, and therefore this function will be discontinuous as well. We will need, however, a more precise definition of continuity, as it is not always that easy to draw conclusions just by looking at the graph. For example, here is the graph of the function x times sine 1 over x for non-zero x's, and 0 if x equals 0. What is going on at the origin? Is this function continuous at the origin? It is difficult to answer these questions just by looking at the graph. Even if we zoom in, it is still not clear whether the function is continuous or discontinuous at the origin. Fortunately, a precise definition can be given using limits, and here it is. A function f of x is said to be continuous at x equals a if the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to f of a. More explicitly, f of x is continuous at x equals a if the following three conditions hold. 1. f of a exists. In other words, a has to be in the domain of the function f. 2. The limit of f of x as x approaches a exists and has to be a number. And 3, the limit of f of x as x approaches a has to be equal to the value of the function at a, f of a. The idea behind this definition is simple. If this is our function f, then f is continuous at a means that as x approaches a, from either side, the corresponding point on the graph of f will approach the point a, f of a. Now let's move on to our first example. This example has three parts. Part A is the function f of x equals natural log of absolute value of x plus 2 continuous at x equals negative 2. To answer this question, Remember the three conditions that a function has to satisfy in order to be continuous at a point. The first condition is f of a must exist. In our case, a is negative 2, and f of negative 2 will be undefined as the natural log of 0 is undefined. So the answer will be no, f of x will not be continuous at x equals negative 2, since it is undefined at that point. Part b is the function g of x equals e to the negative x plus 1 for x is less or equal than 1 and 2x squared for x is greater than 1 continuous at x equals 1. Again we have to check the three conditions. First, it is clear that g of x is defined for x equals 1. g of 1 will be equal to e to the negative 1 plus 1 which is equal to e to the 0, which is 1. So the first condition holds. Next, we have to check if the limit of g of x as x goes to 1 exists. As g of x is a piecewise defined function, it makes sense to try and compute the one-sided limits at x equals 1. So let's start by computing the limit of g of x as x approaches 1 from the left. This will be equal to the limit of e to the negative x plus 1 as x goes to 1 from the left. e to the negative x plus 1 is a continuous function, so this limit will be equal to e to the 0, which is equal to 1. Now let's compute the limit from the right. The limit of g of x as x approaches 1 from the right will be equal to the limit of 2x squared as x goes to 1 
from the right. This limit will be equal to 2 times 1 square, which is equal to 2. We see that the two one-sided limits at x equals 1 are not equal to each other, which means that the limit of g at 1 does not exist. And so g of x will be discontinuous at x equals 1, as the second condition for continuity fails. Part C, is the function h of x given by sine x over x for non-zero x's and 1 for x equals 0, continuous at x equals 0? Again, we need to check the three conditions for continuity. From the definition of h, it is clear that h of 0 exists and will be equal to 1. So the first condition holds. Next, we try to compute the limit of h of x as x goes to 0. h of x is given by sine x over x for non-zero x's, and therefore this limit will be equal to the limit of sine x over x as x goes to 0. Now this is a known fundamental trigonometric limit, and is equal to 1. So the second condition holds as well. We also see that the limit at 0 is equal to the value of h at 0. And this means that the third condition will hold as well, and the function h will be continuous at x equals 0. Here are a few remarks. First, know that continuity is a property that applies to points in the domain of the function. A function can be continuous at certain points, while discontinuous at other points. However, when we just say that a function is continuous, without mentioning a point, what we mean is that it is continuous at each and every point on its domain. So which functions are continuous on their domain? As it turns out, the elementary functions are all continuous on their domain. More explicitly, polynomials such as x squared plus 2x to the 7 minus 5 and minus 4x cubed plus x plus 3.5 are continuous functions. Rational functions, which are quotients of polynomials, are also continuous on their domain. Exponential, logarithmic, and trigonometric functions are all continuous on their domain as well, and more. Moreover, when we combine continuous functions to construct a new function, the resulting function will be usually continuous as well. More precisely, sums, differences, products, quotients, and compositions of continuous functions are continuous on their domain. Now let's move on to another example. For which value or values of c will the function f of x given by x squared minus c for x is less or equal than 1 and c squared minus 19 times e to the 0.1x minus 0.1 for x is greater than 1 be continuous for all x's? First, let's make sure that we understand the question. We are given a function f that depends on the parameter c. For every value of c, we get a different function with a different graph. We have to find all the values of c which make f continuous for all x's. For example, here's the graph of f for c equals 6. When we change the value of c, the graph will change as well. It seems like f will be continuous when c equals 4. Let's solve this question algebraically to verify this result and to find out if there are any other values of c that work. Observe that the function f is continuous at any x not equal to 1 regardless of the value of c, as it is given by a polynomial or an exponential expression. So we really need to check continuity at x equals 1 only, and remember the three conditions for continuity. f is defined at x equals 1, and f of 1 is equal to 1 minus c. So the first condition holds. Next, we try to compute the limit of f at x equals 1. And as f is a piecewise defined function, we use one-sided limits. The limit of f as x goes to 1 from the left will be equal to the limit of x squared minus c 
as x goes to 1 from the left. And this limit will be equal to 1 minus c. Now the limit from the right, as x goes to 1, will be equal to the limit of c squared minus 19 times e to the 0.1x minus 0.1. This limit will be equal to c squared minus 19 times e to the 0, which is c squared minus 19. We know that in order for the double-sided limit of f at 1 to exist, the two one-sided limits have to be equal to each other. So we solve the equation 1 minus c equals c squared minus 19. We rearrange to get c squared plus c minus 20 equals 0, and factor to get c minus 4 times c plus 5 equals 0. This means that c is equal to 4 or to negative 5. These are the only two values of c which will make f continuous at x equals 1. Now we can conclude the following. If c equals to 4 or to negative 5, the limit of f at 1 exists and is equal to f of 1. So in this case, f will be continuous at x equals 1, and in fact, at any other x as well, as we mentioned before. For any other value of c, the function f will be discontinuous at the point x equals 1. To summarize, a function is continuous at a point if the limit is equal to the value of the function at that point. Geometrically, this means that there are no holes or jumps in the graph of the function. The elementary functions, such as polynomials, rational functions, trigonometric, logarithmic, and exponential functions, are all continuous on their domain. But other functions, such as piecewise defined functions, may be discontinuous at certain points. We end this video with a few practice problems. Now that you've watched the video, you will be able to solve them. Good luck! And thank you for watching.